Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking all about getting your abs back after having kids. Now, whether you had a baby weeks ago or years ago, I think this will be helpful for you. I'm going to take you guys through exactly what I did to get my core strength back after having my last baby. And we're also going to be talking about diastasis recti, and I'm going to show you the exercises that I did to heal. Quick disclaimer, everything in this video is my opinion. I am a certified personal trainer with NASM. I've been teaching fitness for years. I also have three kids, so I feel like I know a little bit of what I'm talking about, but make sure you do your own research and always, always follow the advice of your doctor. Now, before we get into it, I'm excited to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. And if you've never heard of Skillshare, they're an online learning community and they have thousands of classes for you to take. There's definitely something for everyone. So you can join Skillshare for about $10 a month and you get access to all of these amazing classes. And the thing that I really like is that you can go at your own speed, which is really appealing to me as a single mom who is also trying to run a business from home. I like that I can take it at my own pace. The class that I just finished taking was called iPhone Photography, How to Take Pro Photos on Your iPhone. So this class was by Dale McManus and it was wonderful. He explained everything in a way that I could clearly understand without having any prior photography experience. I learned about what settings to use, how to get a better quality picture, how to make adjustments for different lighting, how to shoot close up. And overall, it was a great class, something that I will definitely be using every day. And I already picked which class I'm gonna take next. I thought it would be really cool to learn about interior design. So I'm really excited to get into that. So definitely check them out, you guys. You can go to Skillshare.com and look at all the classes. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box below will get a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership. And then after that, it's only $10 a month, which I think is pretty amazing. So again, a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, you guys, let's start talking about abs. Now, I know for some of you, after you have a baby, it can be very tempting to jump back into traditional ab exercises like planks and crunches and sit-ups and things like that, because in our mind, we're thinking, oh, you know, we wanna work on our abs, we should do those things. But actually, if you jump into those too soon after having a baby and before you develop your deep core strength, you can actually make your entire abdominal situation worse. I mean, if you think about it, your abs were stretched out for nine months. And after you have a baby, even if you had a baby years ago, your abs don't just go back to the way they were. We have to build back our deep internal core strength before we go on to those more advanced exercises. Now, you guys know the six pack muscles, it's called the rectus abdominis, but those are the most superficial layer of ab muscles. They're the muscles on the outside, but we also have deeper layers of core muscles. So we have the pelvic floor and we also have something called the transversus abdominis, which is the muscle underneath the six pack muscles that wrap around from the back to the front here. If you don't develop your deep internal core strength before you move on to the more advanced ab exercises like planks and things like that, it's like trying to build a house on a weak foundation. And again, this is not for those of you that just had a baby a few weeks ago. This is even if you had babies years ago. We have to get back that deep internal core strength first. Now, some of us women, after having a baby, will have a condition called diastasis recti. And so what this is, again, imagine your six pack muscles on the abs, is when you are pregnant and the baby and the uterus are growing, they're constantly pushing out against those ab muscles. And so what can happen is you can develop a separation in between those muscles and the rectus abdominis. And the separation can cause the belly to dome outwards. Sometimes we call it the mommy pooch. So I got diastasis recti after having my last baby. So when I would lie on the floor and do a crunch, my stomach would dome outwards almost to a point. And if I put my fingers above my belly button and I press down, I could fit two or three fingers inside that gap. Now you can close the gap using specific exercises. But again, traditional ab exercises like planks and crunches can actually make the separation worse, which is why you hear people say not to do those after having a baby. But again, it applies to people who even had babies years ago. I was able to heal my gap very quickly and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I did that. I really just went back to basics, teaching my body how to engage my core using my deep internal core muscles like we were just talking about. So the first exercise that I did was something called a deep core contraction. So this is the first move I did to get my abs back after having my baby and I swear by it. I did it religiously I think for two weeks before I added any other ab work in and it really helped with my diastasis recti and it just helped me get my foundational core work back before I started moving into the more advanced things. Okay so let me just show you what a deep core contraction looks like okay. So I'm going to completely relax my stomach, get my arms out of the way so you guys can see. 
And then here's a contraction. So you pull everything in and up. I'm engaging my deep internal core muscles and then release. Now this is not the same thing as sucking in. It's completely different. And I'm gonna talk you guys through this right now. If you can sit up and try this with me, that would be fantastic. Now I like to think of a four point system. Okay, so the first point is your pelvic floor and then you have your belly button. That's point number two. And then you have your ribs and your chest. So it goes one, two, three, four. We start with point number one, which is the pelvic floor. So these are the muscles at the bottom of the pelvis that support the bladder and the uterus. Now, when you engage these muscles, you can't really see it, but it's more something that you can feel, okay? So imagine like you're going to the bathroom and you're gonna try to stop the flow of the pee from coming out. So you're gonna try to pull it back in. It's that type of feeling. Now, for some people, that imagery does not work. So another example you can use is to imagine you're sitting on a marble and you're trying to pick the marble up off the floor with your vagina. Now, for some of you, this is going to be hard to find. It's going to be hard to feel. For me, when I first started, I could not feel this at all. But then after practicing for a couple days, I really got the hang of it. So don't get frustrated. It just takes some practice, okay? So whatever imagery works best for you, let's try it together. So stop the pee, pick up the marble, whatever works better for you. Pull that pelvic floor in and up, and you'll feel it way down low, that contraction, okay? And then release. And again, engage, pull it in, and release. Okay, so that's point number one. Okay, point number two, you're gonna pull the belly button towards the spine. Now this is not sucking in. Instead, we wanna feel those transversus abdominis muscles that wrap around like a corset. We wanna feel like they're wrapping and pulling that belly button in gently, okay? So let's try point one and two together, relax. And then we're gonna engage the pelvic floor and then pull the navel toward the spine. Now when we do this, we wanna make sure we're not flaring the ribs outward like this. So you wanna imagine that you're knitting the bottom of your rib cage together just gently. You don't wanna do it hard enough that you start crunching and bearing down, okay? And that leads me to point number four, is that you wanna keep the chest up. Let's try it all together. It's kinda of like a domino effect. We'll start down lower and we'll work our way up, okay? So just relax your stomach. And then point number one, engage that pelvic floor. Point number two, pull the navel towards the spine. Point number three, gently close the rib cage. And point number four, lift the chest. So what you should really feel is all of this drawing in and up. And then instead of crunching down, we lengthen and get longer through the spine by lifting the chest up, okay? So it should look like this, not like this. Okay, let's try it again. Relax. And then pull it in, pelvic floor. Navel toward your spine, close the rib cage, lift the chest. And so once you got all of that working, you're gonna hold it for a second and then release. And then again, contract, pull it all in and release. Let's try it one more time. Engage and release. Good, okay, so that is a deep core contraction. So when I first started working on my abs again, I only did this two to three times a day for about five minutes per session. And I did this for about two weeks before I started adding in more ab work. So once you guys master this, you can start with the rest of the ab work that I'm gonna show you. Again, I would try practicing just this for a couple weeks, and then you're gonna use this core contraction, use this engagement, in the other ab exercises that I'm gonna show you. So let's go ahead and do those. Okay, so once I had that deep core contraction down, I started to add it to different ab exercises. So let me show you guys the first one. The first one that I would do is a bird dog or a little bit of a variation of a bird dog. So you come onto all fours here, roll your shoulders down and back. Now again, relax your abs and then engage that core, do your deep core contraction like we just talked about. You're gonna hold that, and then you're gonna start by lifting one arm up off the mat, lower it down, and then release your core. And again, draw it in, engage the muscles, lift the other arm, put it back down, and release the abs. Again, draw it in, and this time you're gonna lift a leg, hold it for a second, and then release back to the mat, release the abs. Again, draw it in, lift the leg, lower down, 
and release. Okay, so you just practice holding in the core while you lift different arms and legs. And then once you get more advanced and feel like you need a little bit more of a challenge, you're gonna start lifting the opposite arm and leg at the same time. Okay, so you relax the abs. Now give me a deep core contraction, pull it in. Lift the opposite arm and leg out long. Find your balance, see if you can hold it for a few seconds. And then lower with control, release the abs. And then again, engage, pull it in with the opposite arm and leg and lower down. So for this one, try to do 10 to 15 reps on each side and see if you can do two or three sets. The next exercise we're gonna do is just some heel taps on the floor, okay? So we're gonna come all the way down here. Palms go down by your side. Now you're gonna lift your feet up here so that your knees are bent at a 90 degree angle and your knees are stacked on top of your hips. Don't let your back arch up off the floor. You wanna try to keep your lower back connected to the ground the whole time. So again, you're gonna do your deep contraction, hold all of your abs in, and you're gonna tap one heel to the floor, lift it back up, and then release the core. Again, pull all of this in, deep core contraction, tap the other heel, lift, and release. Again, hold the abs in, contract, tap, lift, and release. Now, as you do these and you get more advanced, you'll want to start focusing on tapping your heel further away from your butt. It's going to make that exercise a little bit harder. And again, I would try to do 10 to 15 reps, rest, and then see if you can do three sets. All right, you guys, and the last exercise that I wanted to show you is just a standing twist. So you'll stack your hands like this, get all of your weight over on one side and tap the opposite toe. Okay, you're going to start by engaging the core, holding it in. Twist knee to opposite elbow and come back to center. Release the abs. And again, pull the abs in. Hold that core contraction as you twist. Tap it down and release. One more time. Engage the core. Twist and tap. Good. So again, try to do 10 to 15 on both sides and see if you can repeat two to three reps. Okay, you guys, that is it. Those are the exercises that I use to build my core strength back after having babies to heal my diastasis recti. I hope you guys feel like you have a good place to start from now. Start with those deep core contractions, just holding it and then releasing it. And then once you've got that down and you feel like you can feel all of those muscles working, start adding in this other core work. And then you just keep building on your core strength from there, adding some more and more advanced moves. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.